I started out this project trying to film a video about the new custom GPTs that came out a couple weeks ago. I'm always trying to find ways to leverage AI to be able to reclaim the few precious hours of free time I have as a medical trainee so that I can spend time doing things that actually matter to me, like spending time with my family. I have a goal of turning all of the textbooks that are recommended by my residency into Anki flashcards for me and my co-residents. One of the most time consuming parts of this endeavor is taking the images from a textbook and pasting them into the flashcards that I create. And I recently discovered that there's a way that you can automatically import images into flashcards by using HTML links. As long as you're linking the file name exactly as it exists in the collection.media folder, you can automatically populate your flashcards with images. That means no need to manually copy and paste images ever again, which would be freaking huge if I could figure this out. I would be getting that much closer to being able to turn an entire textbook into flashcards with a single click, which is like the holy grail of this quest to Ankify everything. Now, obviously this wouldn't necessarily work with every textbook, and there's a lot of textbooks you really wouldn't want to do this with because they contain a lot of garbage you don't want in your flashcards. But in radiology, we have these case review textbooks that are the perfect candidate for something like this. And they come very highly recommended by our attendings because as they love to say, the best way to see more cases is by taking a stab at some of these unknown cases from these case books. These books are organized in a very standard format where the image or multiple images are presented along with a list of questions. And then on the second page, you have a diagnosis, the answers to the questions, and some extra comments about the condition in question. And they all follow this format exactly, almost exactly. My goal is to make it so that we can study the content from these textbooks while also benefiting from the convenience and the space repetition that Anki offers. So my plan was to create a custom GPT that would work through one of these casebooks systematically to extract the text, place the closed deletions, and would also link the appropriate images. But it turns out that even with the custom GPTs, uh, the best I could hope for would be to process these cases one to three cases at a time. And I would still have to screenshot and save all of these images from the textbook, which is way too cumbersome and honestly a far cry from the one-click holy grail that I had envisioned. Well, that project got put on hold for a couple weeks because I rotated onto nights and I worked 19 days in a row. Like and subscribe so I can quit this stupid job. Anyways, while I was actively dissociating on these long night shifts, I had the realization that maybe this was not the right task for ChatGPT. I'm not really asking the chatbot to do any high level processing. I'm just asking it to extract text and images and then organize that data in a specific way, which at its core is really just data transfer. There's gotta be a simpler way to do this. Well, turns out this is the sort of thing that people have been using Python to do for a long time. And unfortunately, I don't know anything about Python, but I do know somebody who does, and he's my best friend. So let's give him a call. All right, I may have abused this relationship in the past, so I really don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> Hello? Hey, um, I have something I need your help with. How much does it pay? What did you have in mind? It's a Python project. I wanted to make an app that extracts images and text from a PDF textbook and puts it all into a CSV file that I can upload into Anki and create flashcards from it. So how much does it pay? Just kidding. That was uh, not a real person. That was ChatGPT. It is my best friend though. And I have abused it. So after a quick conversation with the chatbot, I figured out that I needed to download a code editor, the latest version of Python, and get access to PyMu PDF, which is a Python library that helps you extract images and text from PDF documents. What is a Python library? Honestly, I'm not sure. It sounds a lot like a book of magic spells. It's got a bunch of pre-coded functions that you can use to build out your scripts. Like it makes it easier to do the magic stuff without having to come up with the spells from scratch every time. Armed with my book of spells, I was ready to start building my app. The game plan was as follows. Step one, test out the image extractor to see if what I wanted to do was even possible. Step two, design the Anki no type so that I know how my final CSV would need to be structured and so I have a good endpoint in mind. 
And because I was using ChatGPT, I had to get a working prototype as quickly as possible so that if I was going to fail, I was going to fail quickly before I had invested a bunch of time into this project. Obviously, I worked with ChatGPT to code 100% of this project because I thought Python was a snake a couple weeks ago or maybe a reference to my favorite movie while I was growing up. So I created a custom GPT and gave it all the background information about what we would be trying to do, as well as reminded it that it needs to treat me like a total noob, because that's what I am. The first thing I did was test a script that extracted images from the textbook for a given page range, which seemed to work fine. I realized I was gonna have to figure out a clever way of sorting and naming these images so that they were all associated with the appropriate case. But before I could even really finish that thought, I had encountered my first problem. The image extractor script was failing to recognize every case in the textbook and thus failing to extract all the images from the text. This was happening because of the way the case numbers were formatted. There were a bunch of spaces in between each number and I wasn't gonna end up using the case numbers anyways. So I just told the script to completely ignore the case numbers and this seemed to fix the issue. Well. It fixed the issue except for when there were two cases presented at once on a single page, which I'll get to that later. The second major issue I had was that a lot of the images I was extracting looked like they had been inverted. The color scheme was inverted and there was no rhyme or reason to it. And so I figured it would be easier to fix this in Anki after I had imported all the cards and stuff. So I figured I would just table this for now and deal with it later. The third problem I had was getting the text extractor script to ignore certain parts of the text and only grab the portions of the text that I really wanted to be in the flashcards. This is where I learned a lot about regular expressions, which would soon become the entire backbone of this script. A regular expression is a way of targeting specific text as well as segmenting your document. I was able to use the consistent formatting of these cases to my advantage and target only the specific text that I wanted. This way, it ignored all the other text that I really didn't care for and didn't really need. The fourth major issue that I encountered was that I needed an automated way to count how many images were in each case and be able to communicate that to the text extractor script that I had written so that it could generate the appropriate number of HTML image links within each case. ChatGPT suggested having the image extractor script count all the images and then associate them with the diagnosis and then put all that information into a JSON file, which the text extractor script could then access and then know how many HTML links it needed to create for each case, which worked perfectly. I could tell I was getting really close to having a fully functional script, so I extracted a few practice cases in order to get my Anki note type totally dialed in. I didn't want people to feel really overwhelmed with all of the information that each card would contain, but I still wanted it to be readily available if they wanted to reference it so that they didn't have to go back and look it up in the book. I knew that I definitely needed some sort of image gallery to be able to review all of the images so that when you looked at a case that had a bunch of images, it wasn't super annoying to review. This is also where I fixed the issue I was having with a lot of the images inverting the colors randomly. I just went ahead and added an inversion button so that you could flip the color inversion on the images that you wanted to. It's actually useful to have the ability to invert images in radiology, so it's kind of a two-for-one tool. I decided that the questions and answers should appear in drop-down menus to give people the option to study them. That way they wouldn't clutter up the flashcard if they weren't in use. And it made the most sense to have the diagnosis contained within the closed deletion since that was the most important information that I was testing anyways. Some other issues that I faced while I was trying to fine-tune this Anki note type was I had to figure out how to add extra fields, which ended up being pretty easy. I just had to look in the Anki manual. There's basically no limit to the number of fields you can create, which is pretty cool. Another issue I had was getting the images to actually show up within the flashcards. Turns out you have to have this little button checked here. This allows there to be HTML within the fields in the flashcard. Another issue I was having was getting the images to show up within the image gallery. I fixed this by assigning a class group within the CSV file so that the JavaScript gallery actually recognized the images as an object it could pull in. And after about a week of working on this project for a couple hours in the morning before heading to work, I had two functional scripts. The image extractor script pulled all the images out of the textbook, named them appropriately, and also generated a JSON file with an inventory of how many images went with each diagnosis that could be accessed by my text extractor script. The text extractor script was very impressive. 
in my humble opinion. It extracted the diagnosis and placed closed deletions around them, appropriately organized the questions and answers, as well as generated the exact number of image links that matched the file names perfectly. It corrected the formatting issues and made sure everything was neatly separated so that it would line up with the fields in my Anki note type. I then created a simple script that would convert the output from the text extractor script into a CSV file, which I could automatically upload into Anki. And after that, I had perfectly functioning flashcards, which I had created from an entire textbook in just a couple of clicks. Well, almost an entire textbook. My script still had some major flaws, unfortunately. One issue with my script was that it really couldn't handle the instances where there were multiple cases presented on a single page. Now, this really wasn't that big of an issue in this textbook because there were only eight instances of that or 16 cases of that, but in some of the other books in the series, almost every single page has multiple cases on it. So it would be a major issue moving forward. Also, even though these textbooks are formatted very similarly, they're not exactly the same. Ideally, this script would be able to be used on all of the books in the series, but the way it's written currently, I'd have to make significant modifications each time I incorporated a new textbook from the series. For example, none of the other textbooks include the diagnosis colon text in any of the cases which is kind of an important part of the script currently. I created something really cool that feels like a real life cheat code, but it loses its utility almost immediately if it's not more generally applicable and able to be used with all the other books in the series. So I decided I couldn't stop there. Over the next couple days, I would read the official Python standard library um, in whatever downtime I had at work. Throughout the day, I would think of potential solutions to the problems that I was encountering and also trying to anticipate any other problems I might encounter as I tried to fix my script. And eventually, I had an epiphany. I didn't have to create a script that would solve all my problems at once. I'm way too much of a noob to be able to write something as sophisticated as that. So instead, I decided I would try to break down my problems into the most basic parts possible. Then I could address them individually and then package up all the pieces into a common format that was much easier to work with and that would allow me to get the results I was after. I took this new perspective and a fresh box of Diet Coke and Mountain Dew and got back to work. I took a closer look at all the books in this case review series and identified what all the common elements were. These were the best targets for my regular expressions. I developed a uniform tagging system that I could use to label each piece of information that I was extracting. It made it much easier to manipulate and process the text in a more consistent way, and in a way that didn't rely so heavily on consistent formatting between books within the series. I changed how the scripts split the text from each case, which resolved the multi-case issue that I was having as far as the text was concerned. I updated the image naming convention to make it more simple and straightforward, and so that it would apply across the board to all of the different books in the series. I also included new logic that helps the image extractor script determine when and how to separate pictures when they're presented in a multi-case format. By doing all this, I've established the trunk of my main script pathway. Now, anytime I work with a new book, I don't have to take it all the way to the finished product. I just have to modify the data enough that it feeds into this common pathway. This will significantly decrease the amount of work that I have to do each time I introduce a new book from the series. And finally, I packaged all of these different scripts into a simple app which made it so I can process an entire textbook and turn it into flashcards with just a single click.